हेलो फ्रेंड वेलकम टू मरी इंजीनियरिंग हब दिस इज नरेटर रवि गुप्ता टुडे वी गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक रिगार्डिंग द क्लीयरेंस इन द टर्बो चार्जर मींस वेरियस क्लीयरेंस आर प्रोवाइडेड इन द टर्बो चार्जर सच एज यू नो के एल एम एक्सियल क्लीयरेंस रेडियल क्लीयरेंस सो बेसिकली व्हाट इज दैट मींस through a series of diagram in today video we will try to understand that what is the importance of this clearance and why it is taken so much of care in the turbocharger system so first before begin the video i want to tell you that i have made complete series of turbocharger covering each and every topic and i am very sure that if you are watching this video you will have some doubt regarding turbocharger you can clear your doubt by watching all these videos i have give this description of the video in my description box you can watch it from there or you can simply go to my playlist and you can find turbocharger playlist you can watch the whole series it's a very effective video i guess you will be much more benefited so let's begin the today video of turbocharger so basically first question is asked is that what is the importance of clearance in turbocharger system so first let us understand that as you know this is a compressor and this is a turbine side and the turbocharger rpm this turbocharger rpm is rotating at around 10 to 11000 for a two stroke engine rated rpm of a turbocharger varies from 10 to 12000 so you can imagine that this high speed rotating machine this high speed rotating equipment is very very important that it should not get any excessive hindrance or it should not have any obstruction while it rotates so it should have proper clearance maintained if the proper clearance is not maintained at that time it may happen that the running element the rotating elements as compressor or turbine may get damage as well as the other component which is also attached to it at the end like here you can see this turbocharger source the self lubrication system like this so this may also damage the pipe or bearing so the importance of clearance is that it should be maintained first perfectly so that to prevent any type of vibration or any type of movement and second it should be maintained to prevent damage to the component for that reason we are very much bothered about the clearance now the questions come to our mind i have told you what is the importance of clearance the question come to our mind how we are going to measure them and how we are going to make sure that every time we are measuring we are making sure that the clearance of this compressor or turbine side is perfectly okay so for that what we do we measure a value known as k value this k value is basically what is a distance which is measured from the of the rotor shaft from the bearing end of the compressor side tip of the rotor shaft to the fixed end casing of a turbo charger and the value which is obtained is called k value okay this k value indicate that when the compressor is new at that time after it is installed this value is taken 
and is encarved in the casing. We should, after doing every overhauling, we should make sure that this value should be properly maintained. Now, first let us understand what is the importance of this value. Basically, what is happening, this value makes sure that the clearance in between the compressor wheel, forward part and the casing and upward part and the casing is ok. It makes sure that the turbine is free to rotate and there is no it not getting touched with the nozzle ring. It making sure that the compressor is rotating freely and it will not get touched with the compressor casing. So now that is the importance of K value. But the question come to our mind that by K value we come to know. But how we will make sure that the clearance which is in the rear side of the compressor and on the power side of the compressor is also properly maintained because for that because you can see from the diagram this is different and this is different the clearance is different so in order to have a perfect tip top reading we have come up with two value apart from k is L and M. L is basically what happened when we push the other end from the other end of the rotor means of the term turbine side if we push the rotor at that time what will happen this you can see one minute. if we push the rotor at that time what will happen this compressor wheel will touch the rear end of the casing so the maximum clearance on the front end of the compressor will be visible this will be taken as k1 so we have taken earlier when there was a clearance before and after in normal turning time the value we have taken k now we have pushed the rotor on the maximum on this end um, okay now after pushing it we are getting a clearance maximum on the front part of the compressor and casing this value is called l this value is called l okay when we are pushing it now and as we are pushing it so the value which is k1 we are getting will be less than k so k minus k1 will give us l it's very clear now in order to find the clearance on the back side of the compressor what we are doing we are pulling the rotor on the from the turbine side like this we are now pulling we are now pulling the rotor on from the turbine side so what will happen it will touch the compressor on the extreme forward part like this so we can get the maximum clearance on the rear side of the compressor so the value which we will get will be recorded at k2 this k2 will be greater than k and this will give us a clearance if you minus the k2 minus k we will get a clearance called m so whenever we are overhauling a turbocharger we check this three clearance k l m m is the rear end of the see here now you will take m is the rear end of the compressor clearance l is the forward end of the compressor clearance and k is a value when 
adequate clearance is maintained on both side so this is how we can come to know that the compressor after been box back is maintaining proper clearance and if it is run at adequate rpm it will not touch the casing and it will not damage the compressor plate apart from this clearance which i have told you there is also a concern regarding that turbocharger may vibrate means in a radial direction okay why it will happen because this phenomena will happen because of the bearing wear down this also happen because of because of the heat thermal stress so to compensate that we have to measure the radial clearance of the turbo charger apart from that we have also have to take the axial clearance actually klm is the axial clearance which we are taking and radial clearance which we are taking is basically we are ensuring that after the thing is getting heated there must be an adequate clearance so that it cannot it doesn't get stuck seized means what i mean to say is that you can see from this our one minute that the there should be adequate clearance in between this okay otherwise this if the clearance in between this is not proper it may get stuck to ensure that what we are doing we are putting a filler gauge as you can see here we are putting a filler gauge here and we are checking what are the radial clearance on the each side of the turbine blade to ensure that when the thing will get heated up it will have sufficient clearance and doesn't seize so like that we are very much concerned about the clearance in the turbocharger basically why because first is the high rotating component and a slight misalignment of a clearance can have a devastating effect can cause the equipment breakdown because it is a precise equipment so precise box back is very important so now i will show you a chart okay see this is a chart of an auxiliary engine in which mainly the thrust clearance which is called axial clearance uh one question is also one more time asks that why it is called thrust clearance so i will give a synopsis in this basically what is happening why it is called thrust clearance is that as you know that the nozzle is placed in a axial direction to the turbine side so it's a axial type turbocharger okay and compressor is also converting the kinetic energy into the pressure energy so basically the turbine is giving a force on this direction okay on this direction and compressor is also giving a force on this direction but the thrust which is given by the turbine side is more and therefore it need to be accommodated for that a thrust collar arrangement is provided and the bearing is provided here is double raised and therefore it is called thrust bearing because it compensating for a thrust with the help of a thrust collar so that reason is called thrust bearing and the clearance which we are measuring is called thrust clearance so this clearance is thrust clearance you can say this axial clearance is the thrust clearance and this radial clearance is the normal you can see so basically you can see that for different type of a turbocharger there is a limit which is given okay 
if the clearance is within this range you can run the turbo charge if the clearance is more than that you have to change the component because it may vibrate it may break down it can have a devastating effect so prevent all this we are doing clearance measurement i hope now i have given you a clear idea about klm clearance and you can also know say k k1 k2 whatever you like so basically the clearance are three klm in axial clearance and rotor clearance are basically measured with the help of pillar gauge and with the help of dial gauge so if anybody say you what are the importance of clearance i hope you can now tell them the answer if you have any doubt please do comment below i will be happy to reply those who are watching till end we are first i am first of them i am very thankful to you have a good day and please do share our video in your social platform in your group in discuss with your friend so that they can come come to know about this channel our aim is to reach maximum to marine people who are interested in acquiring the knowledge so please help us to find our aim thank you friend have a good day take care